Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and as I mentioned already before, like a month ago in one of my videos, I'm working on the new improved um, filter, right now only for iNav, that is supposed to extend how the dynamic gyro notches are working. And to be honest, that it's almost like... A, alternative i'm not saying the replacement but really like alternative especially on the slightly older esc that you haven't upgraded or you do not want to replace to an rpm filter yes inf 2.4 already supports inf RP, uh, RP, rpm filter based on the uh, telemetry from the ESCs. However, there is no bidirectional D-shot support yet, and this kind of limits the, the possibilities to really use the RPM filter. There is something called, depending really on the period of time and the naming, either the gyro analyze or dynamic gyro notches or dynamic filtering that exists both in INAP and in Betaflight. And it's also creating it's working on a similar principle but instead of setting the dynamic filters notches based on the rpm of the motors it's setting them based on the fft fast fourier transformation analysis of the gyro signal itself and it works if you have something like a resonance at 200 hertz it will set up a notch at 200 hertz and it's great However, it's not perfect and I figured out that I can just make it better by making them work as um, a matrix, really like a matrix. Uh, it, for example, the single gyro notch works that if on the roll uh, there is a frequency peak of, let's say, 200 hertz, then the roll axis gets this uh, 200 hertz notch. Great, great. If something is found on the pitch, then the notch is set on the pitch. Fantastic. Dual gyro notches, the one we, we, which one you can set with the percent of the separation, uh, default 8%, just set up two notches. But what if we assume that if there is a noise peak at 200 Hz at the roll axis, it also might be manifesting itself with the lower, slightly lower frequency on other axes. And this is what the... Um, matrix filter really is doing. It's like a RPM filter without knowing the RPM. It sets the set the nine nine three by three notches based not on the RPMs but on the static no, FFT gyro analysis. There is a problem with that that it's slightly mm, the, the notches are not updated as often because it takes slightly more time to update the, the filter than to get the new telemetry from the ESC. So it's not really 100% exactly like that. But the question is, does it work? I decided to check and I took my 5 incher on the spin with the matrix filter single dynamic notch filter and dual dynamic notch filter and some special case that I will show to you later. And I recorded uh, some black box lock and took them to the analysis and here are the results. Let's begin with the case with the single gyro notch, single dynamic gyro notch. This is the input, this is the raw uh, input from the gyro on the roll, pitch and the yaw axis. And the more yellow or greenish something is happening, that means that there are more frequencies on this range. Here we have throttle, here we have frequency. And this band, this curve over here, is the motor noise. Uh, because how the, the motor really changes the RPM, it's not really flat line, it's slightly curved. And this over here, this may be not clearly visible on the pitch axis. And here on the yaw axis is how the RPMs, how the motor generates the main frequencies, main noise uh, in the gyro. And as you can see, with all the filtering in place, the, the INAV setup with the single dynamic notch was able to attenuate some of the frequencies, some of the noise that's happening over here. This, this band over here is visible, but it's less visible, right? We also see the same thing here on the pitch and the same thing happening on the on the yaw. Bear in mind, this is the setup that it's not the default. The default setup with the two dynamic gyro notches on each axis is this one. 
the same situation uh, same f same UAV same dame same propellers uh, same everything only like recorded five minutes later we have vibrations a lot of vibrations from the from the motors here very visible on the roll axis not so visible on the pitch axis and also visible on the yaw axis and as you can see over here after the filtering it looks kind of slightly well compare this with this it's better it looks like better the the frequencies the noise coming from the motors especially here on the roll in case of dual notches is less visible that means it's less interacting with the the P pid processing and everything that happens below so this is the default this is the default setting of INAF and beta flight for the oh i forgot to mention that the rpm notches were disabled this is only gyro stage one gyro stage two and dynamic gyro notches and now let's go to the results from the rpm filter you see the motor noise over here is almost almost not visible also bear in mind that the matrix filter starts at 150 hertz so anything below 150 hertz is not really attenuated at all but by the but those filters but it was here it's not there it's really hard to see the trace it's kind of similar to what was happening with dual notches but here you can really distinguish this shape here yeah maybe somehow over here so it's cleaner the gyro traces in case of the matrix filter are really indeed cleaner and to be honest i was not really able to determine what's flying better with the rpm filter or the matrix filter it's really, really the feeling behind the sticks was very 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 comparable now one last thing a lot of people say that thanks to the rpm filters they are able to fly even with propeller damage for example they lose one blade on the propeller but still they were able to limp home and the quad was not going into too much vibrations and everything was let's say let's say fine yes i cannot really argue with that this is really one of the greatest advantages of the rpm filters because it can just help you to continue flight when the propeller is damaged luckily luckily um during one of the flights with the matrix filter i crashed pretty badly i crashed pretty badly and to be honest all four propellers are in the state right now that well on my according to my standards is not flyable for example this propeller uh lost uh tip of the propeller here it hit something probably the x60 plug also here a huge chip here this one is chipped over here this blade is bended upwards this yeah this one maybe even is let's say relatively fine you can fly with that this one this blade is bended downwards and this one is cheap over here definitely something that you cannot fly as a result the amount of vibrations during the flight was really tremendous but how the matrix filter was handling this like that you see compare the raw amount of noise here on the roll oh i think the pitch is somehow the recording on the pitch is somehow broker on the quad is so pin on pitch hmm, hard to tell or on the yaw it's much 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 dirtier on the for example on the roll axis in case especially with this extremely damaged propeller and i really use the whole one whole battery trying to figure out what's happening and how and see still this noise which comes directly from the damage seriously damaged propeller is almost not visible here on the filtered out traces yeah this this thing over here which comes from the attenuation of this thing so it, it's not really perfect it was visible that quad is really like 
struggling to keep in the air anytime I added more throttle than let's say 60% even the, um, the FPV feed was going into this jello mode but it was more or less flyable for me it's a success for me it's a success it's working quite nicely and uh, I think really it's there it's fine you do not really need uh, ESCs with the RPM telemetry by the B directional D shot and all those stuff to be able to really have a very well, very good and nicely working dynamic gyro filtering. Like I said, what next? This definitely will go into the next release of INAV, which will be INAV 2.5. I will probably make some final adjustments and probably I will drop the option to have dual notches on one axis. I think I will just make the matrix filter the default option because as you can see the results on the matrix are so much better and why to keep something that um, has the same has much worse uh, characteristic that nobody really will want to use it over there's not really like no no idea the question is will this go into the beta flight or any other flight controller software um uh, looks like i'm a man of success because i have some enemies some people um, around beta flight circles currently have very negative feelings towards me especially the one called uh, oh i will not say the name if you know the name then you know the name and there's really like a lot of prejudice i pre yeah, they really like don't want to take a look at any results I recorded only because I recorded them. So, but it's really up to them. I, however, asked Marks, uh, also known as the UAV Tech, which is really like the expert on the gyro filtering on the beta flight world, to take a look at what I have and um, try to determine if this might be worth porting into the beta flight. Only, of course, if the beta flight will be interested in merging this stuff back, because if not, then, well, why bother, right? Okay, so um, that's all for today. And trust me, the INF 2.5 will be amazing. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope I hope I shared some light on the latest developments in INAF and maybe hopefully also in the beta flight, if of course beta flight will be interested in that stuff. If not, then well, you know how it is. So thank you for watching. That's all for today. Until the next one. Bye bye.